Uh, let's talk about the what the foundation sponsored uh, recently and uh, what's happening there. How about with Wi-Fi? Sure, we'll start off with Wi-Fi because it's a, a, a common uh, common thread of interest. Um, so for for quite some time, I think the foundation um, has received previous D Foundation has received feedback that Wi-Fi is uh, an important gap um, in FreeBSD and, and is really limiting. FreeBSD's use as a developer platform uh, on laptops and such. Um, and so we've been sponsoring Bjorn Zeeb uh, to, for a number of, of Wi-Fi wi improvements um, and the sort of starting off with a migration to the, um, the Intel uh, shared BS, uh, dual licensed IWL Wi-Fi drivers um, that are also used in the Linux kernel for, their, for Intel's contemporary Wi-Fi um, Wi-Fi cards, Wi-Fi interfaces. So this uh, this work is in the tree now and is available. There's still sort of ongoing work to um, to get it uh, fully stable and, and usable, um, but it is it is in the tree now and uh, supports the um, uh, the Intel uh, Wi-Fi NICs in contemporary laptops. Um, Mark, I don't know if you want to say a little bit about it from the context of the uh, framework laptop like it's it's clear at this point that a huge amount of work has gone into it and i think there's going to be you know the usual long tail of bug fixing and, and stabilization um uh you know before before everything is really seamless but i think you know a huge a huge amount of the the required work has already been done um, there's quite a few users on the mailing list reporting success and and uh, uh it's uh yeah, it's it's definitely a pretty big milestone. Yeah, I think it's um, it's fair to say that there's there's a bit of work, uh, there's a bit of a bit of a road ahead of us still to um, to sorting out a, a number of issues, but uh, we're in we're in a pretty good position now um, and have a, a, a great foundation to build on to to get that last bit uh, completed. Um, let's talk about uh, what's going on with LLDB. Sure, I can say a little bit about that. Um, so LLDB is the LLVM debugger. So it's what GDB is to GCC maybe. And uh, the foundation has worked with more systems to improve uh, support for uh, LLDB uh, with the ultimate goal of uh, allowing kernel debugging uh, with LLDB, LLDB. And so they've, First of all, Moritz Systems has done a great job at documenting their, their work. They've divided it up into six different milestones and they describe those milestones on their, on their site. Um, briefly, the, the first milestone was to uh, improve compatibility with GDB. So GDB is pretty uh, ubiquitous and there's some interfaces that other tools expect. So they're improving that that compatibility. Um, another milestone was to add support for debugging uh, by serial port. Ed or Mark, do you have uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, I guess I can just mention that um, we've been working with Moritz Systems for quite a while on a variety of um, uh, LLDB projects. So uh, they started off by migrating to the um, uh, the standalone debug scheme that LLDB uses for all of the other architectures, um, which essentially, essentially means that LLDB starts a debug server and um, runs the, the target that you're debugging underneath that debug server. Um, so it does that both for local and remote debug, um, which has a, a number of sort of nice uh, attributes, both in terms of how the debugger itself operates um, and just for testing and reliability, it means that remote debugging and local debugging um, sort of by necessity uh, work as well as well as each other and, and um, inherently get tested in, in, because remote debugging, local debugging is remote debugging um, in effect. So that was the, the first project that we started with um, and just sort of general stability improvements for LLDB on FreeBSD. Um, they started or they followed that with some improvements to various architectures, uh, as Joe mentioned, 
Um, and then the most recent one is, is adding support for kernel um, debugging both core files and live, live kernel debugging. Um, and this work is all in upstream LLDB um, now and, and is going to be in the LLD, uh, in LLVM's 14 uh, release. Maybe it's worth mentioning why. I know John Bodlin does a lot of work with GDB and, and it's uh, well used by a lot of developers. Um, why is it important for us to improve LLDB? I, I mean, the obvious one is the is you know, we generally have a preference in FreeBSD for permissive licenses, and, and LLDB has that. Um, uh, I think Mark or Ed would have more to say about other reasons why we feel it's good to have good support for this alternative debugger. Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, at, at the end of the day, uh, the debugger is, is something that you know is is historically a debugger has been part of FreeBSD's base system, and, and we'd like to keep that. And so having a permissively licensed uh, debugger that's in the same family as the whole rest of the tool chain, um, you know, has some some nice uh, attributes. Um, in, in some ways, a debugger is a, a different sort of um, uh, situation than something like the compiler or linker or other parts of the tool chain, um, because everyone who builds something on FreeBSD uh, who compiles software uses those other tool chain components. It, it sort of affects everyone, whereas the debugger is is specifically used by developers who are investigating um, crashes or other problems. Um, and so, you know, there's there's less absolute need for us to have a debugger as part of the base system or to have a permissively licensed um, debugger. But I think it is it is still something that we want to be able to have a, a full suite of um, of tools available and having them all share the same licenses um, uh, is important. Um, as well, there are a few nice attributes about the way that LLDB works. Um, so one, one example is that it uses Clang as its expression parser, uh, which means that any expression um, that you when you when you provide an expression on the debugger command line to uh, examine some variable or something like that, um, it provides a very high fidelity experience because it's actually using Clang to interpret the expression that you've um, uh, you've entered and uh, basically just in time execute the expression to to determine what it is you're trying to to find. Um, the the comment that I made earlier about the way that LLDB operates um, with the debug server. Is also something that um, is is quite nice, um, and with some future work, should allow us to to provide some um, some more some more friendly debugging environments, um, debugging tool uh, cases. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, you know, people who developers who are already familiar with GDB, um, GDB exists on FreeBSD and, and works well, and and um, you know, people are free to use it, um, but uh, um, having LLDB available and having um, LLDB, uh, having the ability to compile LL LLDB on other operating systems, say, and then debug um, a FreeBSD process um, using remote debugging um, is, is another kind of nice feature that, um, that is uh, well supported by, by LLDB. Do we want to talk about um, open SSH two-factor authorization? Sure. Um, so FreeBSD contains a copy of open SSH in the base system and is generally kept up to date on a regular cadence when upstream releases um, come out. And so that's been continuing. We have um, open SSH 8.8 .8 in the base system at this point, which is the, the latest release. Um, but one of the recent additions to um, OpenSSH upstream was the addition of uh, FIDO uh, slash U2F keys. Um, so things like Yuba keys, um, universal two-factor authentication um, devices. And upstream, OpenSSH added support for this um, in the, the recent past. And with the update in FreeBSD, we've enabled it in the base system as well. So this inv uh, involved adding libfido and libseaboard to the, the base system to be used by OpenSSH. And SSH in the in the base system now, 
can use a, um, a UV key or a solo key or any of the other um, U2F keys uh, to authenticate to a remote uh, SSH server. So this is this is a feature that um, you know people have been um, quite interested in for some time and has been available in the base or in the in it's been available in OpenSSH in the ports collection for some time, but um, it's convenient to have it available in the base system OpenSSH that's just available out of the box as well. Well, I know, uh, Joe, you mentioned John Baldwin. Let's talk about what's going on with WireGuard. Here. There was some question about the stability and quality of the um, WireGuard implementation that was prepared for the FreeBSD tree. So the foundation, um, foundation worked with John Baldwin to review the existing code and prepare um, prepare the OCF um, uh, prepare the FreeBSD kernels OCF implementation to support WireGuard's needs so that WireGuard can just make use of the functionality that already exists. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the, the new implementation that he's been working on is quite a bit smaller um, than, than the one that was in FreeBSD previously. Um, he's had to do some quite a, quite a bit of refactoring and I think overall improvement in the, in the crypto subsystem uh, to accommodate WireGuard. So I think that's going to benefit more than more than just WireGuard. Um, yeah, so I, I think in effect, um, John's work has um, sort of refined and improved uh, OCF in FreeBSD um, with one major outcome being that WireGuard is able to make use of those primitives um, and an internal FreeBSD WireGuard is much, um, uh, much smaller and sort of more self-contained um, than it would have otherwise been because it can make yeah. use of the functionality that now exists um, in the FreeBSD kernel. And uh, John has also, so John has been working both on OCF in the FreeBSD kernel, as well as changes to uh, WireGuard to make use of the functionality that's now provided in OCF and just sort of general review and improvements of the FreeBSD WireGuard um, uh, implementation. Yeah, 